Well, hello, I hope you and your family are safe and well. It is indeed a gift and a blessing to be able to be with you virtually again. As you can see from my backdrop, my household has been doing a lot of Lego building recently. So that is a lot of what we've been up to during this kind of strange time, if you will. I also hope that you have been enjoying our journey through streams in the desert. I know I certainly have, and I thought today I could share some thoughts that I have surrounding the July 11th devotional reading. So the July 11th devotional reading, the scripture associated with it comes from the book of First Kings, and it reads, Sometime later, the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. And the devotional begins, Week after week, with an unwavering and steadfast spirit, Elijah watched the brook dwindle and finally dry up. Often tempted to stumble into unbelief, he nevertheless refused to allow his circumstances to come between himself and God. Unbelief looks at God through the circumstances, just as we often see the sun dimmed by clouds or smoke. But faith puts God between itself and its circumstances and looks at them through God. And I'm gonna read that sentence again because that's what really stood out to me from this reading. But faith puts God between itself and its circumstances and looks at them, the circumstances, through God. I've been doing a lot of reflecting lately over the past 16 weeks in this new normal that we're finding ourselves in. And I've come to several realizations, two of which I'd like to share with you. First is that I've gone through cycles of emotions these past several weeks. So some weeks I feel calm and at peace and clear-headed. Other weeks I feel anxious and overwhelmed. And I've also realized that my relationship with God has gone in cycles as well. God is always near me. God is always near you. God is always near all of us. But how I've responded to God has varied. Some weeks I have, as this devotional said, put God first before my circumstances and viewed my circumstances, viewed this time during the pandemic through God. But many days, if I'm honest, I have not. Many days I have looked at God through the circumstances. I have not sought God first. I have just kind of tried to go with all my will and all my strength and just bulldog through the days, just kind of trying to survive. And this trend connects with something that I wrote about in the email that I sent to the Feast community this past Sunday and a meditation I shared yesterday at our church weekly communion service that we do virtually. And it's this idea of fixing our eyes on Christ. See, we all have to fix our eyes somewhere. Maybe it's on alcohol, maybe it's on a friend group, maybe it's on money, maybe it's on the, our, new ha our next new house, maybe it's on binge watching Netflix or the news. We all have to focus our eyes somewhere, but it's only when we focus our eyes on Christ that we will find true peace and calm and joy as we journey through the, the storms of life as we journey through the pandemic, as we journey through our uncertainty, as we journey through anxiety, as we journey through things like the death of a loved one, a diagnosis, depression. It's only when we turn to Christ and fix our eyes on Christ that we will find true peace and calm regardless of what's going on around us. And the Apostle Paul gives us a great example of what this, this looks like. Because in Paul, we see a guy who was stoned and imprisoned for his faith. He was constantly opposed and taunted. In every city to which he traveled, he faced unforeseen and unknown circumstances and situations. He was even involved in a shipwreck. If anything could be said about Paul's life, it was consistently surrounded by chaos and uncertainty. But yet Paul remained steadfast, he remained determined, and he boldly and unapologetically preached the gospel and the good news of Jesus Christ all the time. And how he did this, we know the reason he was able to do this. He shares it with us in his letter to the Philippians, in his letter to the church at Philippi. And he writes this, 
I know what it is to have little, and I know what it is to have plenty. In any and all circumstances, I have learned the secret of being well-fed and of going hungry, of having plenty and of being in need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. See, Paul figured out that as long as his eyes were focused on Christ, that's all that mattered. Because with Christ, by focusing on Christ, he would have peace and calm and strength to endure whatever faced him. The uncertainty and the chaos didn't matter because his eyes were focused on Christ. And that's what sustained him and allowed him to carry on. And so it is with us. And this idea of fixing our eyes on Christ connects with what we read in our devotional reading. Because it's when we fix our eyes on Christ that God will be first before our circumstances. When we fix our eyes on Christ, we will look at our circumstances through Christ. And it's then that we will be reminded of God's faithfulness, that God is our provider, our good shepherd who will never leave us or forsake us. That God, that nothing can separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ. And so I would encourage all of us in these days and weeks ahead to fix our eyes on Christ. To start each day fixing our eyes on Christ. To, to take a check-in throughout the day. Where am I fixing my gaze? Am I fixing my gaze on the things of this world? Or am I fixing my eyes on Christ? Because it's when we put, we view our circumstances through God, it's when we focus on Christ that we will find calm. Jesus is our eternal shelter in the storm. He's our eternal love. He's our eternal hope. And ultimately, he is all that matters in this life and in this world. Stay safe and well, and may God bless you.